Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another member stroke patron blog, um, uh, or vlog even. Uh, this is where I answer questions asked by channel members on YouTube and uh, patrons on Patreon. Um, I'll talk a bit more about those and what that actually means at the end of this video. But in short, I'm going to answer a lot of questions. And we've got over 40 questions. Um, but before I dig into it, um, I've got a few housekeeping notes. Uh, one thing I do want to say is the order of videos is going to be changing a bit. Um, I've conducted so many road tests that I can't keep them coming in chronological order. Um, so if I've driven your car in New Zealand and it hasn't appeared yet, um, it might not for a while because um, I, I think I need to crack on with the Australian tests. Um, uh, the, the video series itself will soon be in Australia. Um, I think back end of this week, um, the trip overall. So any episode that's got a number on it, uh, I think we're up to episode 37 or something now, um, will, um, they're all in sequence and will continue to be so. And um, I'm trying to do event reports close to where they should be in that sequence, but the road tests are going to be all over the place. I'm going to pick and choose um, from various tests. I've got some very interesting ones in Australia, and I think you've been waiting too long for them. Um, I'm certainly keen for you to see them. So that, that is going to chop and change. Uh, at the moment, I am in my Airbnb accommodation in um, Mornington Peninsula, uh, which is south of Melbourne. And uh, I'm, I'm liking it. I found Melbourne itself is just too frantic. It's just too busy a city. Uh, I feel nicely away from it. Um, I've booked this Airbnb for a few days because I need some recovery time again because I've just been overworking myself again. And th there's also the stresses of the trip. I mean, stopping with complete strangers. And um, th they've all been wonderful. Thank you. I'm so grateful that people have offered me places to stay. But sometimes you just want your own space. And um, I, I, I've reached that stage where I, I you know, it, it's just nice not have to worry about my impact on other people and, uh, you know, I'll worry about the impact I have on their lives as well. Me just sort of turning up a random person. Um, I'm particularly interested where people have had to have conversations with their family. Um, I may have covered this before, trying to convince their family, but this random man from the internet is fine to come and stay. So, um, yeah, it, it can be quite stressful, but it's all right. I have tea. Uh, while I'm talking, also need to discuss sound issues. I'm really annoyed. Um, the DJI, DJI Osmo action camera that I'm recording this on, um, I had to buy a separate uh, adapter which plugs into the side of it um, to enable me to run the external microphone you can often see in cameras, uh, uh, in shot. Um, the, the problem is there's been quite a few times where um, before I did an update on this camera, it would regularly drop the connection. So if I turned the camera off and then turned it back on again, it wouldn't always recognize that the camera was attached. Uh, since I did the update, which was towards the end of New Zealand times, it might even have been only when I got to Australia, um, it, the camera seems to respond much better. For a start, there is a little icon which shows me whether the microphone is connected, which is massively helpful. So I instantly know whether it's working or not. So hopefully that's going to be really improve things. I've lost some footage where the sound's just gone completely. Um, I've had to drop bits of music over the top. It's blooming frustrating because I want to do a professional job, but I also want to do a professional job as easily as possible. I need the camera to just go and record. And I, I thought that's what it was doing and it wasn't. So um, I'm sorry about that, but yeah, that's um, one of those annoying things. Uh, something else I need to discuss is the shop. Um, we've still got some of the two CV hoodies. I'm not wearing one typically, I'm wearing a took one in stock, I believe. The shop has been offline for a week or so because um, Rachel and George have needed a break. Um, at the time recording, they're just coming back from that break. Um, so the shop should be open by the time you see this video again. Um, so, yep, yeah, feel, feel free to head to the store at hubnut.org. Um, and um, you can buy t-shirts, mugs, stickers. We will have a fresh t-shirt design coming for this trip. My designer is currently working on that at the moment. Um, we've got some initial designs in. I like them a lot. There's just a few tweaks and hopefully we'll have those in stock fairly soon. So that should be good. I say fairly soon, a matter of weeks. But yeah, um, 
support through the shop is always appreciated. Um, it's one of the things I love. It's one of the things I miss is um, now Rachel looks after the shop completely is I miss that involvement. I used to really like packing the orders and stuff like that. And um, I've noticed, you know, Cletus McFarlane still seems to do his own merch and that's good. I, I think it's good to have that connection with your um, fans. Um, I really like it. Um, right, we should probably get into questions then. I'm gonna start with the um, Patreon questions. And uh, some of these may repeat, but I'll try and speed through them as we go. Um, so um, first up, Simone Smith on um, Patreon. Patreon. Uh, if there was a car that you could build, what would you take from the cars you have driven but would make it a unique hubnut vehicle? Uh, well, I think um, it's got to have the comfort of a Citroen, preferably a hydro pneumatic one. It's got to have a V6 engine, but um, well, at least a six cylinder engine. It hasn't got to be a V6. And uh, it's got to be simple. So what I want is something with the simplicity of a Ford Falcon, say, um, but with the um, ride comfort of a Citroen XM. Um, that would kind of be an ideal vehicle. Um, I mean, I, I love small, tiny vehicles, but uh, at the moment, what I cre crave most is comfort. And uh, it'd be interesting to see if the car I've bought back in the UK delivers that. Um, I'm getting quite excited now because uh, it's getting closer. Um, but yeah, I, I suppose, yeah, I want something that's really soft but has a really big engine. That'd be good. Uh, Max Ferreira asking two questions, cheeky. What do you think of the Deu Espero? Well, uh, one of my dream cars. I would love to do a video on a Deu Espero. It's got to happen. Um, I think the styling of them's fantastic. I mean, under the skin, they're Mark II Cavalier, and that's not a bad starting point by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, when is it you fly back? Um, I'm being a bit cagey about the date, but um, by mid-March, I will be back in the UK. Uh, wishes me a safe flight, thank you. Bill Wilson, do you think the day will come when petrol stations will become a rarity? I think we're already in that phase. If you live in rural parts, you will have noticed an awful lot of petrol stations have closed. And uh, already I've, I've had times, even in the past decade, where I've had range anxiety in the 2CV because I've been somewhere quite remote and there's no petrol stations. So um, that's only going to get worse as um, electric or hydrogen takes off um, next to it because, yeah, petrol stations are just going to go out of business. That is a flip side I am worried about, um, but not too much point stressing until things actually change. Uh, Finn Cow, um, I think that's a Finlay. Uh, when meeting with people on this trip, which of your car collection back home has sparked the most interest and had the most questions about? It's got to be Took, the Invercar. Um, a lot of people talk about that and, and say they discovered my channel because of Took the Invercar. Um, I, I wore my Invercar shirt, this is an unofficial one my sister made for me, when I went to the British and European car show and some chap came up to me with a chat just because I had that on my t-shirt. Not a, a, a Hubnut fan, um, but he owns a Reliant Rialto in Australia. The man is a legend. And uh, Finn Cow now, now really wants a Trekker. Yeah, that was um, yeah an interesting drive. Uh, Barry Davis, who has also visited New Zealand while I've been down in this part of the world. Um, did you play spot the French car as I did? Lucky to see one anywhere. Yeah, yeah, French cars are pretty rare. There seem to be more of them here, um, bizarrely. Peugeots were the most common French car I saw um, in um, uh, New Zealand, other than when I met up with Citroen people, um, but they were cheating. Uh, William Tever, what has been your favourite location in New Zealand and your favourite so far in Australia and how different is the car culture uh, compared to New Zealand and to the UK? Oh, that's a lot of questions there, William. Um, favourite location in New Zealand, I find it hard. I can't really pick one. A lot of people have asked, but um, I enjoyed pretty much all of New Zealand. I, I appreciated the differences. Didn't like Auckland. Um, Auckland's just too busy, a bit like Melbourne, really, or Sydney, indeed. Um, so yeah, big cities, not just not my thing. Car culture, um, in New Zealand, what surprised me was the variety, especially in the old cars. If you look at some of my car show reports, there's a right mix of cars. Um, rotary powered Mazdas, very popular in um, New Zealand. And uh, a lot more British cars in New Zealand as well. And um, in Australia, 
uh, I guess things are a bit more um, power orientated because of the Holden Ford thing and the fact that powerful cars are very desirable here. A lot of American cars here as well. I've had quite a few American cars in New Zealand as well. So maybe not all that different. And when, when I went to the British and European show, which will be coming up in a show report um, here in Melbourne, um, it felt very much like a British car show. Uh, just lines of cars just sort of sitting around all a bit boring to be honest but there were some nice cars there so i hope you enjoy the report i just like seeing cars move about you know that's fun uh colin rook in the days before hubnuth and being an automotive journalist when you had a normal job was there a company stroke fleet vehicle that you enjoyed actually using for work one that most people wouldn't even consider interesting generally i hated the fact that um i was often forced to drive modern cars um, at these companies. When I worked at Kelsey Media, things were a bit different. I remember going out to jobs in the TR7 convertible, for instance, uh, but they had a BMW E39, which was a nice car, but I didn't like the um, signs mini owners made at me when I drove past them. Um, that wasn't so good. It also had a horrible gearbox that I didn't get on with, but it may just feel I wasn't getting on with automatic gearboxes at that phase in my life, because they also had a Saab 9.5, and that was pretty dreadful in terms of automatic gearbox as well always seem to be in entirely the wrong gear but it did cover ground very very nicely but yeah overall no i've just preferred driving classics uh, chris berry have you having a great time in australia have you any plans for the fleet in the uk yes and i'm not going to tell too much at this point um what i will say is took the invercar is going to the ormskirk motor festival um in um august that is uh, so that should be fun. I should probably have a think about the Coventry Motor Fest as well. But um, yeah, it, it, the summer is um, filling up already with shows. That's going to be good. Uh, are you going to sell any cars? I think you consider selling them a tiz. Will never happen. And City Rover may happen. Um, what are your plans for the to sell? Well, um, funnily enough, uh, where's my phone gone? Uh, I've been... Uh, the, the chap here who's lent me the Holden Ute I'm currently hurtling around in um, has chopped some sections out of Toyota Tercel. I think I mentioned it in the previous member vlog. So they should go a long way to helping get it back on the road again. And um, when I say rear quarters, I do mean um, the entire rear quarter. I hope you can see that. Um, both sides. So I need to find a way of getting those to the UK. I haven't found it yet. Um, the one suggestion was to buy a ute and put these in it and ship the whole lot back. Um, I don't really know about that, but um, I need to find a solution. Uh, am I setting a just giving page so it can be restored? I may do crowdfunding on the Tercel because um, it's going to get very expensive to sort out, I think. Um, but I need to get back and get my head around it. I can't say that's the biggest priority when I get back. Um, getting the working cars up and running is the main priority. Oh, and Foxan, um, not long after I get back, the main priority is getting Foxanne back on the road because um, she's going to the NEC for the Practical Classics Classic Car and Restoration Show at the end of March. We're going to be on the Reliant Owners Club stand. Very grateful to the club. They've done so much for me in getting that car to where it is today. Um, but we're going to do more. There are some improvements I want to make to make that car a lot nicer to drive and we're going to try and tackle some of those at the NEC so um, if you're going along to the Practical Classics Classic Car and Restoration Show um, it's the 27th to the 29th of March I believe um, yeah do come and find us on the Reliant Owners Club stand they are good people um, buh, 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 buh. Graham Bentley asks um, I wonder if you try to keep your feelings neutral towards a car yeah yeah I do try to um, it's not always easy. I think the Escort Mark VI, uh, my opinion, was already tainted because I, I just think they're an awful looking car. And I do think most of its rivals were better. Um, what car surprised you the most, good or bad, following a test drive? <sighs> That's re really, really difficult to answer because um, I will say the um, Austin 3 litre was a surprise. And uh, that video should have gone live by now. Um, but I'd already driven one before that video, so I already knew they were a bit of a surprise. Um, but um, that's a car that definitely offers a lot more than you might expect. Um, so, yeah, that's a good one. Um, 
Any of it have been worse? Ooh, I don't know. Not on video, I don't think. I think I've enjoyed pretty much every car I've ever driven. Um, even the Skoda-based Trekker from, you know, New Zealand's only car. Um, it wasn't, by any stretch of the imagination, a nice car to drive, but I still enjoyed driving it. So, yeah, sometimes it's not always about nice. Um, this race for a car, oh, well, no, the car must be the best. No, we stuff that. Uh, right, we're going to jump into the YouTube questions now. This is asked by people who've joined the channel. And um, I'll just quickly take you through what that means. Uh, I have a spin around to look at the computer screen. Hopefully it's not refreshing in a horrible way. But this is my page um, on YouTube. If you go to youtube.com slash hubnut, you'll get straight to my channel. And there is this join option. And if you press that, um, you get this thing. You can join it. Two dollars ninety nine a month. Join Hubnut as an official Hubnutter. Yeah, that's now me. You can, you Shush. Tell myself to shut up. So yeah, that, that's just telling you a bit about it. Um, you get this little badge next to your name, so you can spot the loyal Hubnutters. Um, although you're all loyal, I don't want you feeling too inferior just because you haven't joined. I'm saying entirely the wrong thing. But yeah, you can join that, and uh, it'll um, eventually load up a screen and you know there you go there's payment options and uh, then I ask questions um, so if you go to my community tab um, so channel members members only have had this question this is where the questions are coming in this is where I'm answering your questions they are down here so um, that's members only I don't hide much content from um, non-members because I don't think that's fair I don't want to hide stuff behind a paywall but um, similarly, people who are prepared to dig in their pocket every month, I want to give them something. So this is what I do. You all see these videos. Uh, the members and the patrons get early access to these videos, um, just these member vlogs. But um, I want everyone to see them because um, that seems fair. I don't want to hide my content. So that's what happens if you join or if you're a member on Patreon. Um, that, just head to patreon.com slash hubnut and um, you can follow the process there. I don't fully understand Patreon, Patreon myself. So um, yeah, follow instructions or ask a small child to help you because they understand these things better than I do. Uh, but uh, where were we? Questions. Uh, Scott Fisher asks, have you ever driven a Rover Metro stroke 100 diesel? No, but I have driven um, Rover Metros and I have driven a Peugeot 106 diesel and it's the same engine. Um, initially a 1.4 in the Metro and then a 1.5 in the 100 to make the 115. Um, and um, I can imagine they're actually a decent enough steer. Um, both cars, the Metros and the um, 106, suffer from rather cramped offset driving positions. But um, uh, I reckon the Metro is probably the nicer drive. And it's a nice engine because there's no turbo, so there's no turbo lag. So that's all right. Mr. Mark UK 1. Uh, what car do you miss most in the UK and what will be the first car you drive when you get back? Well, my new car will be the first car I drive when I get back. The first one out of storage is likely to be the City Rover just because it's blocking all the others in. But like I say, Foxanne needs to be at the NEC, so she needs to be a bit of a priority, which means the others may have to wait their turn. I might get them out for a bit of a, you know, just to get the fluid circulating and allow them to warm up to full operating temperature. But... Um, yeah, um, the priority when I get back is Fox Anne. Um, Exlexol, that's an interesting name. Um, L6 or V8? That's a very Australian sort of a question to ask. So straight six engine or V8? Hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of like both. Both have a lot of appeal. V8s tend to be more powerful and that's not always a good thing. Um, but... Um, I feel the, the the sort of more modern Australian V8s just have far too much power. You can't use it. Whereas I think the um, six-cylinder engines are a bit more accessible. So I'll say six, for, just so we've got um, uh, an answer. Um, someone who goes by the name, and I apologise for any parents here, a cock of Donny, said, if you could bring back one car with you, which would it be? Well, I kind of wanted to bring um, uh, Betty the Fairmont back. But um, 
I actually now harbour a dream of finding um, a, a Falcon AU Ute, um, preferably one that's just a chassis cab, and building a tiny car transporter on the back so I can transport Tuck on it. But I think that's just a dream. There are many cars here I've driven I would love to take back. Austin Kimberley, uh, Leyland P76. Oh, I've got some top content coming your way. All of them have been amazing. Uh, Declan McKay. Um, how are you dealing with the highly variable weather here in Melbourne? Well, you will notice I'm wearing a hoodie. Um, three days ago, um, I was sweating so hard I thought I would dehydrate. Um, it has been very changeable, the weather here. And uh, unfortunately, I was driving a car that day that had no functioning air conditioning. And so that was very hot and sticky. Um, it's been much cooler and I've actually got blankets on the bed. So the temperature here in Melbourne does vary quite a lot. Uh, it, it, down this part of Australia, it's much more like New Zealand. Uh, the sun is very, very strong and the temperatures do vary. James Wallace, do you prefer Australia or New Zealand? And are you looking forward to returning? Um, I do hope to return because I feel I haven't really explored Australia at all, really. Um, do I prefer... I can't pick... How are you meant to pick one? They're, they're, Australia and New Zealand are very different countries in quite a lot of ways. Um, so I don't prefer one over the other. Um, there you go. That's a non-committal answer. Uh, Nick Wiseman. Hello, Nick. What was the best section of road you drove on in New Zealand and why? Ooh... There are many very entertaining sections of road um, in New Zealand. The drive up to Deniston in the rain, that was quite an entertaining section of road. Um, a lot of the road on the west coast of the South Island of New Zealand was very, very entertaining as well. Um, but uh, yeah, favourite. Yeah, it's, it's probably down on the South Island, lots of twisty roads. Queen Charlotte Drive is the twistiest road I've ever driven on. That actually made me feel ill. Uh, that was too many bends. Uh, and um, Megan Wiseman would like to know what is the highlight of your New Zealand trip. Um, to be honest, it's probably the people. This may sound a bit soppy, especially um, as these are people I stayed with for a, a good amount of time on the South Island. But um, yeah, I think that, that was certainly the most surprising aspect was how nice people were, how welcoming they were. And, and it's been the same in Australia, absolutely the same. Um, inviting me to stay and you know showing me the sights it's been really nice to have that and um, I'm very grateful for it it's been very humbling uh, Max Eves says how do you feel about your return to Blighty uh, a certain amount of trepidation given the state of the weather um, this isn't a place for, for politics so I'm not going to discuss that but um, the weather certainly has been causing me some concern I think my cars are safe but by heck, there's been some flooding and it's been terrifying to watch from this distance. Um, so, yeah, very much um, uh, sending thoughts to those who have been affected by the flooding. It's been horrific. Um, Pete Barrett, hope you get hands on a P76. Yes. Or a super rare 47. No. Um, four sevens, uh, only 10 survived. Um, so uh, I didn't rate my chances of getting my hands on one. I was happy enough to get my hands on a P76. There will be a video to follow in the coming weeks. Robert Brink, have you seen any Simca Arond wagons? And have you driven a Chrysler with a Hemi 6 engine? No, I've driven many cars with six-cylinder engines but didn't originally have them here in Australia. But the Chryslers have so far evaded me and I've run out of time now. Uh, I am counting down the days until departure and I've kind of got stuff planned out so it's not going to happen and i've seen simca arons but not simca around wagons unfortunately uh sean murray uh, asks what the highlight of the trip was so far i think i'll go back to yeah the meeting the people um go going to hobbiton was definitely a moment um sometimes you just have to do the tourist thing and um yeah it was just so nice to be it's such a lovely place and uh it was very relaxing but um Last night I was on top of Arthur's seat here on the Mornington Peninsula watching the sunset with kangaroos behind me and birds flying around. And um, yeah, that was one of those moments as well where you just sit back and go, wow. Um, Kapakula, what, hi Ian, what's a good first retro Japanese car? Um, anything Japanese 1980s, I would say. Anything at all. It was all pretty well sorted by then. If you can find a fourth generation or third generation Civic that hasn't rotted to pieces, that would be my top tip, to be honest. 
Right, just had a pause to um, drink my tea, so I'm not slurping on camera. I know that causes some upset. Also, I've been prattling so long, my tea had gone slightly cold, so I had to down it almost in one. Uh, back to the question. Richard Glossop, how do you find the style of drivers in New Zealand and Isles compared to the UK? Um, New Zealand inattentive is um, a, a phrase. People just don't pay attention, have a horrible habit of staying in the right-hand lane on dual carriageways and then suddenly cutting across. And I've seen a bit of that in Australia as well. Um, but um, in neither country have I found people as aggressive as they are in the UK. Um, um, every merge point becomes a titanic battle in the UK. Um, people just trying to get in front of others. And it's always, you know, well, it's usually premium um, German saloons being driven like, like complete idiots. That doesn't seem to happen here. Um, there's greater consistency. You have to watch out for the Ute drivers a bit. Um, they can hurtle around a bit, but um, generally the amazing thing here in Australia, I, I mean, we have speed cameras and police in the UK, but people don't seem to speed as much, I've noticed. So that, that is a big difference. Um, Clive Tucker, have you ever tested a Triumph Acclaim? Uh, I've only driven one once, which I was going to buy, but it produced so much blue smoke I didn't. But yeah, I need to do that. That's one of many, many gaps in my... Um, um, video library that I need to drive a Triumph Acclaim. Uh, what would be the youngest car that you would consider as Hubnut? I don't think I do really. I haven't got an age limit on it. Most modern cars leave me cold. So maybe, I don't know, after 15 years, but it's hardly a hard and fast rule. Alan Funt, a uh, bit of a deep one. Over the years, you've had lots of cars come and go from Spartan like the Invercar to luxury like the Lexus. What do you think is really at the nub of your buying and selling? Uh, purely the desire to own as many different cars and have as many different experiences as possible. What makes you love and hang on to cars? Character. Character is the one thing that gets me, which is why most of my cars are cute. Um, they just win me over. Uh, love of the underdog? Yes. Glutton for punishment? Definitely. Enjoy a challenge? Ever so much. Itchy feet? All the time. Yeah, I just like... I just like different cars, different experiences. Um, the um, car I've bought in the UK is definitely going to be a different experience. I'm really looking forward to that. It's a car I've wanted to own for a very long time. Robert N. Green 6. Uh, what is the network and support like for electric vehicles down under? Um, a bit mixed. Um, in parts of New Zealand, very well supported. Um, and uh, some of the major routes have a lot of charge points. I can't say I've really noticed too much here, but there's a lot of Tesla Model 3s in both countries, so they're proving popular. Uh, Aircrash Tupolov, have you already made plans for future car shows and meets back in Blighty? Um, yeah, I've already discussed um, uh, the um, Practical Classics Classic Car and Restoration Show, end of March. Um, Orms Cup Motorfest in August. Uh, Bristol Classic Car Show is another big one. Uh, I haven't done Bristol Classic Car Show for a few years. Um, I'm going to be there very much a Hubnut presence. I'm going to have, um, uh, we're even going to have a prize for the most Hubnut vehicle there. So if um, you're in a car club in the sort of Bristol, Somerset area and you're having a stand there, make sure there's some Hubnut content because I will be prow prowling the um, stands looking for my perfect Hubnut car. I will have a stand there, uh, but I'll probably be running the stand on my own. So, um, it won't be manned at all times. I will try and have set times where I'll be there for meet and greets. And so you can buy merchandise. But yeah, um, also need to mention, um, if you go to their website to buy tickets for the show, um, if you enter Hubner as a promotional code, you'll get 10% off your ticket price. Um, so um, yeah, very, very glad the organizers um, are willing to have you there. It's, um, it should be fun. It's a very sweet little show, the Bristol show. I've been a number of times over the years, over the past sort of 12, 13 years. It's not a huge show. It hasn't got the intensity of Birmingham. Um, I mean, it's held in cattle sheds and things like that, at the um, Shepton Mallet Showground, I think it is. Um, but uh, there's always a really good mix of cars and um, a really passionate audience that perhaps don't get to the bigger shows um, in the Midlands or London, for instance. So. Um, yeah, really looking forward to it. Should be a lot of fun. Um, S Rich GTR, which two new or two expensive cars are you looking forward to becoming Hubnut worthy over the next few years? Hmm, interesting. I don't know. 
I mean, my interest kind of ends in the um, early 21st century, so I don't know stuff that's going to come down to my level. I guess electric cars. I'm looking forward to electric cars getting cheaper, and I'm looking forward to seeing how people overcome the challenges of keeping electric cars going. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Paul Laters uh, asks, how much of the fires and the aftermath of the fires affected your trip in Australia? Not too much, to be honest. Um, uh, I, I've been to some fire affected places and that will be coming up in future content. Um, but it hasn't stopped me doing what I need to do. Um, the fires were kind of petering out a little when I got here. Um, of course, one of my major decisions was to fly to destinations rather than drive. And some of that was driven by the fact that I knew the fires were burning, especially in the Canberra area. Uh, they were very bad at the time I was looking to get down to Tasmania. And uh, so I just reasoned it was easier just to fly instead. Um, and uh, yeah, I reckon, yeah, about a week or so, and we should be getting some Australian content. MG Bets one would you say your views on Fords have mellowed a bit recently? Not really. Um, problem is, it, 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 it's become a channel joke that I hate Fords. I don't. It's just a lot of Fords do leave me cold and still do. Um, even Escorts, I just think some of the rivals are better cars. Um, and I'll probably get shot for saying that. Um, I think the problem around Ford is there's a bit too much rose-tinted glasses. There's a bit too much love for cars that are just ordinary. And there are so many other cars. I don't understand why Ford is sort of lauded in a way Vauxhall isn't. There aren't actually that much in the way of differences between the two companies. Uh, I find it just very, very odd. Uh, righty. Uh, the, the new or latest car when you arrive back in the UK, is it manual or auto? Oh, that's easy. Manual. Uh, Nick Thomas, uh, I'll just say a big thank you for all the car vids. Um, car museums in New Zealand were just surprising in number and excellent in content. I can't disagree. The museums were a big surprise. Paul Birch, have you got a place to live sorted when you get back? No, it's not a priority. I've got a lot of traveling around to do, so I think I'll probably be just continuing the Airbnb life like this. It occurs to me I could rent a place like this for a week or maybe even a month and the rate comes down and um, you don't have to worry about stuff so much. And um, it, it, it for, for someone like me who's slightly nomadic, that's probably perfect. So I'm probably just going to do that, to be honest. Lloyd Vehicle Consulting. Uh, apart from the Lexus LS400, what is the fastest car you've ever owned? Oh, yeah, I'm not really good at owning performance vehicles. Um, uh, Reliance Scimitar GTE. That was a bit performancey. That's probably it, really. Uh, Tony Smith, are there any big plans for Tuck and Ellie? Uh, yeah, I want to get Ellie running properly. Um, hoping to take it to someone who can actually do some diagnosis on that. And um, I'm pondering an engine rebuild on Tuck because um, I'm still a bit worried about that spark plug that blew out and um, that she's a little down on power. But whether I'll actually manage that, I'll probably just get back and decide I'll just drive her anyway. Manka Zeb 100. Continued thanks for all the vicarious adventures, traveling, museum, perusing, car hooning, la 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 la. Um, so that thing behind you in the pic above, is it a copper Dalek or a Knight of Knee? Uh, it's referring to this picture um, on the channel. Um, and uh, that is Ned Kelly's armor that I encountered here in Melbourne. So I will have done some filming with Ned Kelly's armor for you to look forward to. Um, I don't know too much of the history of Ned Kelly, but um, I thought, seeing as it's there, I'll, I'll go and have a look. Uh, Ivano uh, gave me a good tour of um, Melbourne City Centre, and that was one of the um, highlights. Uh, Howard Levert, having said that you were going to change the releases of videos, and mindful of your difficulties before Christmas, Meltdown, have you, wisely, uh, reduced the number of videos recorded whilst in Australia? No, no. As time's gone on... Um, if anything, I've been recording more videos. There's not so much of a road trip vibe here because there hasn't been so much road trip. I've just been flying in. So I haven't done so many videos of the journey itself, but I've done so many test videos. So um, that, that will build up a buffer and give me some recovery time back in the UK. Uh, Fergus McIver. Hi, Ferg. Uh, my question, how cheap and poorly spec can a car be and still function as a usable daily driver able to cover long distances? 
with relative ease and what car have you experienced which comes closest to this humble status? Well, that's the, kind of the beauty of the Australian stuff. The Falcons and the Fairmonts and the Commodores can be had in quite a lowly spec, but with quite a big engine. So they're very, very good at covering long distance. It's a problem in the UK. We just don't have cars with big enough engines. If a car's got a big engine, it's a luxury car, which means you've got too much stuff to possibly go wrong. Um, so yeah, usable daily driver. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting question. Uh, Kia Magentis sounds appealing, I reckon, but that's not going to be poorly spec. It will have quite a lot of spec in it. But you know, and, and this and Bluebird um, T72 is a good example of a very usable daily driver that can cover long distances with relative ease, and they're very simple cars. So um, there you go. As he drives the Nissan Skyline, maybe he'll appreciate that. Uh, Ohio Pete, if you're going to purchase a car from the 1930s, what would it be? Gold. I don't know much about cars from the 1930s. Um, Austin 7s are quite charming, but also quite terrifying. Uh, so, um, hmm, yeah, um, I'm not sure, really. I would need to do some research. I, I do really like the idea of owning a really old car. The oldest, oldest car I've owned so far is a 1955 Austin Westminster, which was ace. Um, but um, we'll see um, how that goes. Um, Chris McKay, who um, whose Cambridge I drove in New Zealand, uh, hope all that well is well in Straya. Um, do you get offered cars for sale now that you're a big celebrity? And is it the same for sponsors? Uh, I do get offered cars. Um, I can't always take them. Um, I'm trying to think if I've taken cars I've been offered. The only one was the Mazda, and that didn't go particularly well. So um, I've had a lot of fun with it, to be fair. So maybe it did go well. Um, sponsors, I don't get approached by sponsors. I have to go out and find sponsors. And that's one of the reasons I don't, is because it becomes a massive distraction um, trying to find people like that. So, um, yeah, channels that have sponsors don't necessarily just have people rushing up to their door, hurling money at them. That's not how it works. Um, commercial deals involve a bit more work. Rich Delgado, since I was t like 10 years old, I've always loved the Jensen Interceptor. Oh, fascinating looking vehicles. What's your opinion? Um, um, mostly of a fuel economy nature. And have you ever driven one? No. Um, the small engine in a Jensen Interceptor is a 6.2. They also did a 7.2 Chrysler V8. Um, I, I would quite like to drive one just to see what they're like. Um, but I, I, I get a slight whiff that it might disappoint me. Maybe I'm wrong in that. Um, if you own a Jensen Interceptor, prove me wrong. Uh, Andrew Bergen. Uh, thank you for bringing us some truly wonderful things. From the cars to the museums to the general surroundings of the countryside. Oh. My question is, what is a defining hubnut car? Is there really a defining hubnut car? I don't think there is just one car. If you think about my own fleet... Um, I mean, the 2CV is actually quite cool and popular these days. But when I got my 2CV, or got into 2CV, they were deeply uncool. So, yeah, a car needs to be deeply uncool to be hubnut worthy, I think. And the 2CV is just there just purely because of the fact that once upon a time they were desperately uncool. And that's when I got into them, not when they were fashionable. Um, right, that brings us to the end. Um, so yeah, I've, I've talked about um, how to join if you wish to join the channel, uh, patreon.com slash hubnut if you prefer to not give Google your money and I can understand why. Uh, obviously the shop is always good for supporting us and there's a donate option if you wish to just donate money. Um, that's always uh, appreciated, so thank you very much. And uh, that's probably about it, yeah. That's another member vlog gone. So um, you'll be getting this one in March. Um, so that's the third one, I think. And um, the next one will be back in the UK. So um, yeah, we'll see where we are. But like I say, the videos are going to be a bit out of sequence. Um, and they're certainly out of sequence with where I am in the world. My trip is almost at an end and I haven't broadcast anything from Australia yet. But that will change. Um, I do hope to do a live reveal on the new car when I get back. Um, I'm picking it up midweek in an afternoon, so that's not really going to work for doing a live report because people will be working. Um, so I'm going to try and do a live reveal on the weekend, which means I'll have to keep it secret for a couple of days. That's going to be fun. Um, but yeah, 
thank you thank you for watching thanks for your interest um it, it's been great that you've enjoyed this trip as much as i have it has been too long to be fair um i got over ambitious and um yeah i'm definitely i'm i'm not so much homesick but i am travel weary it's fair to say and uh, i'm not enjoying australia as much as i could do just because i'm so tired so um, I'm going to go and have a nice restful day, perhaps in the Holden Ute that I'm borrowing at the moment. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Farewell.